So this is the extended body version of the Beefcake Beetle. We're going to start with a few thread wraps on the end of a straight shank streamer hook that I've clipped the eye off of. Our color for the bottom of this one is going to be an insect green. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to catch just the front tip of this. And as with other foam patterns that you're going to see me tie, or if you've watched any other videos, I'm going to use that same technique of cinching and pinching. I'm going to come back here only about a quarter of an inch. We're looking to give ourselves enough space to create two body segments. So that foam's on the top right now. All I'm going to do very simply is I'm going to squeeze and I'm going to rotate it to the bottom of the hook shank. What I'm going to do next here is I'm going to bring in my thicker or larger piece of black two millimeter tying foam. Now this is going to be tied on in size eight, uh, Tiemco 2499. And so the portion in the front of the segments I want to be about as long as the shank uh, on that $24.99. And so I've already looked at that. I've measured that up. I know that for that, I need to start my thread wraps right about here. Catch that foam right there, and I'm going to leave that portion sticking out in front of it. Cinch and pinch my way back here until I reach that same point. Pinch it, cinch it. Come back over the top, and you want to stay within behind this. And we're going to work all the way back, like I said, to where that green foam is at. To double check where you're at, if you lift up on this, if you can see right here, I can see the thread wraps. I need to go further back on that. I need to go back until when I lift up on that black piece, I don't see thread wraps anymore underneath it. Because that's essentially going to be the back or the butt end of the beetle. So when you look at that, that looks like a good, nice, tight seam. I'm going to bring in one more piece of foam here. So once again, this is two millimeter black tine foam. I'm gonna match it up approximately, and I'm gonna come right over the top, and I'm gonna cinch it into that same area. Pitch it down, give it a cinch. Come back forward with it here. At this point, I'm gonna rotate upside down, and I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna catch the back end of this, pull this, two millimeter tying foam forward. And what I'm trying to accomplish here is really simple. I want to get the thread over the top end of this, give it a good cinch, and I want to lay down probably three or four wraps. So get your three and four there and cinch it. Lift this up, return the thread back to that hook shank. We're going to create one more segment. About the same width apart here. I'm looking about an eighth of an inch or so. So I get my three or four wraps in there. What I would encourage you to do at this point is you can kind of gauge about how long your fly is going to be if you know what the size is. So I'm going to come in with my scissors. I'm going to snip this off just to get that extra foam out of my way. And very simply what I'll do is I'll throw in a half hitch or two here. Snip my thread. Rotate this guy right side up. I'm going to put just a touch of zappa gap down there where I cut those thread wraps. That's just to ensure that that thread doesn't go anywhere on me. I'm going to slide this guy off the are essentially our extended body pin. So that comes off. What I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take my size 8 TMCO, a $24.99. And if we look at our body, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to take the point of this hook and I want this to come through right about there. So this is going to be the bottom of my fly. So I'm going to come in from the top. Try to get that just in front of that body segment. About halfway into the foam. And ideally that's what it looks like. So you're just going to slide that through. Cinch that guy down in the vise. Nice and snug. And I'm going to ballpark this here to once again to make it easier to work with. I'm going to pull this foam forward. I know that that's about what I need. So I'm going to snip off the excess at that point. So I'm going to come in once again with my 6 op black thread. I usually just slide this kind of down and out of the way. Attach that thread to the hook shank. I'm going to run this thread all the way back to the bend of the hook. All the way back right up behind the eye. And then I'm going to throw down some zap gap on that entire shank. The last thing that I want is to take the time to put this pattern together and to have it start spinning on the shank when I take it out to fish with it. I want it to hold up. I want it to stay where I want it to stay. 
So at this point here, I'm going to pull this bottom green part through. I'm going to slide this up. And that foam now, if I've done this correctly, is going to sit right behind the eye of the hook. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish it, pinch and cinch, pinch and cinch, and I'm going to come all the way back until I've gotten all that connected in. And this body will twist. You can wiggle it and move it out of the way if you need to. It'll hold up just fine. And I want to come back and forth. And then we're going to take that second piece of black foam and do the exact same thing. Just lock it down. Squish it down, get it in place. On top of that hook shank. Once we have that secured, I'm going to make sure the nose of my um, bobbin is right here. And I'm going to rotate this upside down. And what we're going to do very simply is we're going to continue that same process with the segments. So I'm going to catch this green foam. I'm going to cinch and pinch. I'm going to get three or four wraps on there. At this point, I'm going to take this um, and I'm going to rotate this right side up. Got one segment created. And now I'm going to start to catch these top pieces here. So I'm going to squeeze this down in place. Bring this top piece down. Really important here with this top piece that you give it a good squeeze once you get a wrap or two of thread on it. So I'm going to catch it. I've got my thread over it where I want it to be. And I'm going to squeeze from the top down and from the sides. I want this all to come together. This nice little plump 3D formed body. So I've got that in there. At this point I'm going to come in and I'm going to tie in uh, the rear legs. For this I have some small, this is just small black rubber, round rubber. Uh, I like the legs a little smaller and spindly than maybe you would use for this size of an insect. Uh, I like the wiggle, the extra movement that I get out of it. So I've got that leg tied on that side. I'm going to rotate that over. I'm going to come in with my other leg. Repeat the same process. Once again, I want the, the joint on that leg to extend back a little bit further than the butt end of the fly. So I'm going to catch it with three or four wraps. And then having it upside down in the vise, I'm going to return that thread to the hook shank. And I'm going to come forward here just in front of where those legs are at. So this next step is a matter of preference. Uh, some people would just snip the legs right there and call that good. I'm going to actually take the legs and I'm going to pull them toward the body and I'm going to catch them on the interior of the fly. So I'm going to catch that one and I'm going to bring the vise around and I'm going to do the exact same thing with this one here. So my personal opinion with this is that it's one little extra step that I can take to change the, the profile as, as the way this fly is viewed from below. It's going to create a nice smooth transition of those legs into the body which from the perspective of the fish just turns it into a little bit more accurate of an imitation so i have those legs secured i'm going to wrap over the top of those and about a quarter inch behind the eye of the hook i'm going to bring that insect green foam down cinch pinch and pull that guy down three or four wraps now at this point here i'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to cut this just in front of the eye of the hook. I'm going to cut a little bit of a taper on the head. So that your profile from below looks something like that. And then before I bring this top piece down, I'm going to take just a little extra bit of zappa gap. And I'm going to touch it just to the top here. Touch that piece of foam down. Pinch and cinch, three or four wraps. And come underneath here. Snip. A little snip here. A little snip there. Before I bring this top piece of foam down, I'm going to take my antenna. And I'm going to time it at this point. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow that top piece of foam to press down. And to push those antenna out front instead of sticking straight up. So at this point here, I come over with my top piece of foam, catch it with the thread. Once again, a couple wraps here and really give it a good squish from above. Kind of flatten that out, pull it down. 
And at this point, I'll come under, trim that top piece of foam here to generally match that taper. I'm going to snip those antennas so they're short enough so that they'll pop up and wiggle for me. And then on each side of this segment, I'm going to come in and I'm going to tie in my knotted front rubber legs. Again, if you get legs in, you don't like the way they look, you don't like where they're at, give them a little twist, a little wiggle. Last step here, I'm going to take a little bit of this gator hair. I'm going to drape it right over the top of the string here. We're going to bring it down right on top of the fly here. So I'm going to come in from the back here with this little dubby needle. And I'm going to fold that indicator over the top of it. So I get a little bit of a loop there. And then I'm just going to catch the front of that. And that just kind of helps, helps point it in a rearward direction. Once I get it secured and where I want it to be. I'm going to pull this back. I want to trim it off about even with the butt end of the fly. And that's going to stick that up and make that nice and visible for me. At this point I can come in. Usually with these guys I just throw in a half inch or two around the body. Now the last step here is absolutely optional, but there's two big benefits to it in my opinion. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to lay down a little bit of UV clear here on the bottom of this fly. And the bonus is number one, it's going to add to the durability of it. It's going to lock down my thread wraps, it's going to lock down some of my joints. The other bonus is that it creates a little bit of a reflective sheen on the bottom of the fly. And if you've picked up large insects, or if you've looked at them, you know that their exoskeletons, the material in them called chitin, creates a little bit of reflectivity. And so this is just a way of increasing the accuracy of that imitation, if that's something that you choose to do.